Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to take a look at the Connected Nation Michigan online interactive broadband map. You can access this by going to connectednation.org backslash Michigan. Then you can hover over the Residents tab and then select the broadband coverage maps. This will bring you to the broadband mapping and analysis page where there's various different maps available. The Michigan hotspot map, state maps, county maps, the interactive map, which is what we're interested in today, as well as the various different broadband statistics. You can click on the interactive map tool and it will launch a new tab or a new window. When the broadband map loads, you will be presented with a splash screen that is providing you information about the data that is being represented in this map. You will have to click that you have read the above information and would like to continue. You'll also notice that the locate providers by address at greater than 10 megabit per second download and one megabit per second upload is already loaded when you launch the map. We'll return to this tool at a later time, but for now, I want to discuss how to utilize the various different tools within the map. The first thing to note is the ability to zoom in and zoom out. You can do this by clicking on the zoom in button, which is a plus, and the zoom out, which is a negative symbol. You can also double click on the map that will allow you to zoom into a location as well as use a scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and zoom out. The other way to interact with the map is to click and drag the map around. This is a left click function, so you'll click and drag. The next tool I want to make mention of is the default extent. This will always bring you back to this view of the map. No matter how much you've zoomed in, how much you've drug around, you'll be able to click that and it will always bring you back to the same view. The arrow buttons here below it will allow you to go back to the last extent or the one previous. The base map gallery will load. This allows us to change the way the map looks. So if we're interested in a very specific way to view the map, particularly with various different layers turned on, this allows us to do that. We can change this base map layer to be hybrid imagery. So if you're interested in looking at a specific location, you can turn that imagery on and you have a much better view. And for today's, today's purposes, we'll turn streets back on. Default extent, and we're back to that same view. There are tools that allow you to measure. So if we're interested in the distance, between one location and the next, and then double click where we wanna finish, and it will tell you the distance. We can also measure an area. Double click, and it will tell us the number of square miles in that particular area. We can also use this tool to determine the latitude and longitude of a particular location. There's also a share button that will allow us to share our map in a very specific way. And again, we'll come back to this tool at a later time uh, to show some unique functionality. You also note that there are two additional buttons here or two additional tools. One of those is the locate boundary district query tool. So we can pick which type of boundary or district that we're interested in. If we're interested in congressional district, we can select that district, click apply. It's going to highlight and then zoom to that particular location, or in this case, this congressional district, Congressional District 10. We could also ask it to find a specific county. We'll ask it to select Gladwin County. We'll apply that and it's going to zoom to and highlight Gladwin County. It will also add those queried layers into the Layers tab on the left. And as we had discussed earlier, we'll look at the Locate Providers by Address at greater than 10 megabit per second download and one megabit per second upload. There are three different ways that you can utilize this tool. You can put in an address, it will zoom to that location, drop a marker, and then present you with a list of providers who are offering 
broadband services there according to data that they have provided. This same functionality works if you click on this My Current Location. It will zoom to the nearest location provided by your ISP for where you are located, and it will provide you with that provider list. You also have the ability to utilize this marker tool to click on any given location, it will go to that location, drop a marker, and again, provide you with a list of providers who have supplied data saying that they offer service above the 10 by one threshold. Let's take a moment to look at the various different layers that are available in this layers toolbox on the left-hand side of your screen. Again, when we did our query earlier for a county and congressional district, those were added in here. If I turn those on, you'll see them light up on the map. You'll notice that each layer has a small triangle out to the left. This allows us to collapse the categories below the layer that you're interested in. The box allows you to turn it on and off, and you'll see that I've turned this on, and now the various different areas of the state having been reported with fiber service have been turned on. And then you'll also notice these three little dots to the right hand side, and these give us additional options for each of our layers. In this particular instance, we can adjust the transparency of the layer. Each of these broadband technologies have been categorized with different shades to indicate the speed that those services are being offered at. The darker being the fastest, the lighter being the slowest. So we'll turn fiber on and off. We'll turn cable on and cable will turn on. You can see the areas of the state where cable is being reported. DSL, where it's being reported throughout the state. And again, it's categorized the darker areas being the faster speeds, the lighter areas being the slower speeds. And this is the fixed wireless layer. Broadband by granularity is also represented in the map. We have four different layers representing four different speed tiers. We'll start with 25 by three as that is the standard FCC definition for broadband. What you will notice on this map is that there are areas of lighter green. Those areas are areas where Connected Nation Michigan either received data from a provider that was their FCC 477 filing or where we had to utilize the actual FCC 477 database for that particular provider's local area. The darker areas are areas where providers worked with Connected Nation Michigan to provide more granular information, oftentimes either road line information or in the instance of fixed wireless propagation mapping where areas are represented at a far more granular location than the census block that is used for FCC 477 filing. We'll zoom back out using the default extent and we'll begin looking at the granularity and mapping at 10 by one throughout the state. We'll turn that off. We will look at 25 by three. Again, this is the federal definition for broadband. Look at 100 by 10, and you'll notice that coverage begins to. And you'll notice as we go up in speeds that we see less and less broadband service being reported throughout the state. And finally, we'll look at one gigabit speeds and where they're being reported throughout the state. There is a mobile wireless layer, which covers nearly the entire state with the exception of a few areas in the Upper Peninsula. This is provided, this coverage utilizes FCC service availability data. If you're interested in looking at broadband growth, you can turn on any one of these layers. We have it at a one gigabit speed, 100 by 10, 25 by three, which is what we will look at for today's demonstration. 
If you zoom in, you begin to get a better understanding of how coverage has changed based on the data that's been supplied by providers since 2017. These purple areas are existing service since 2017. The darker green areas represent areas where new service has been created. These lighter green areas that you see are areas where there's been redundant service created. So an additional provider has come into this particular area. And then these yellowish areas are areas that have been removed since the initial 2017 mapping began. And again, you can look at that at the four different speed tiers that we represent in the map. We can also look at the density of providers by area. And again, that's done by the speed tier. For today's purposes, we'll look at the 25 by 3. The darker an area, the more providers that are offering service in that particular location, down to these areas that are yellow, and those areas are where one provider is reporting offering service in that particular location. This map represents download and upload speeds as it's reported by providers throughout the state. The darker the area, the higher the speeds. The lighter the area, the lightest green, the lower the speeds. There's an additional set of layers that can be utilized. Once again, the county query tool and congressional query both show up on this listing, but we also have the ability to look at FCC's registered antenna structures. You have to zoom in to begin to see those, but when those come on, if you click on those symbols, you can actually access information as is provided by the FCC for these towers. The FCC and FAA require that a tower that is over 200 feet above ground be submitted to this registration. We have the FCC RDOF auction data included in the maps. So we'll zoom back out to a state view and then begin to zoom back into an area. We'll look here in the thumb and you can see that there are various different areas throughout, the, throughout this part of the state that have had RDOF funding When we zoom in, we see that there are multiple areas in this. When we zoom into the RDOF coverage in this area of the state, we notice several different colors represented for those areas that will receive RDOF funding. Each of these colors correspond with a provider listed over here in the left hand portion of the legend. If you click on those, you can find out who that provider is what type of service there's to offer. If you turn on the FCC deployment locations, you'll notice that you have a hex grid over the map. If we take a moment and zoom into a location, this grid will continue to update and provide us with more and more information about what or the number of households under that grid that have received funding. And you can even click on individual locations to understand who is offering service at a location and the information that was provided by a provider FCC for that particular location. FCC program deployment locations represent those locations that have received funding under various different FCC programs, particularly the ACAM, ACAM2, CAF2, uh, CAF BLS, and RBE. If you zoom in underneath each of these hexes, these hexes have a number. They represent the number of households or locations that were impacted by this funding. If we zoom in, that hex will continue to refine itself. If you continue to zoom, it will continue to refine itself. And eventually, if you zoom in close enough, it will begin to show you the individual locations that have been reported by providers back to the FCC related to each of these individual programs. You can turn on community anchor institutions. If you zoom in and click on one of the symbols, 
you can identify that particular community anchor institution. If library is turned on, you can turn on universities. And if you zoom in far enough, other layers become available, such as schools. And you'll notice we have new we have schools turned on. We can turn on healthcare facilities as well as public safety facilities. Various different boundaries and districts can be turned on. So you can turn on the county boundaries. You can turn on congressional boundaries, telephone exchange boundaries, federal opportunity zones, school district boundaries if you zoom in far enough, state senate districts, state house districts, tribal lands. All of these can be turned on. We also have the unserved areas lacking 10 by 1 per square mile, 25 by 3. And again, if you'll expand each of these layers, you can understand the symbology behind this. If you zoom into a particular location, utilizing the symbology over here, you'll note that this particular area has an unserved household density of 11 to 50 households per square mile. If we click on it specifically, it will tell us the number. The unserved household density here is 14.18. If we were interested in sharing this particular map with someone, we could use the share button and go to link options. We can set the current map extent. There are lots of options here that you can play with to make the map look exactly like you would like, but you can ask it to remember the layer's visibility. And then you could copy this link, share it with someone, and when they go to this page, it will load the map. Again, they'll have to agree here and close this, but it will take them specifically to that view of the map. Again, I want to thank you for taking the time to view this tutorial. Please reach out to Connected Nation Michigan if you have additional questions. Thank you.